Sharp, who I'm sure you all know. He's running for governor in New York. He has... came to this convention, he's going to be doing all kinds of things this weekend. He's like jack of all trades. And I want to just thank him so much for, for coming out here and helping us with this event. And thank you all. And Larry? I rem I, I, whenever I come to California, I always think about driving, right? Because I live in New York City and I rarely drive. I drive probably on the weekends. Usually I'm a subway guy. I walk. That's what I do in New York City. Reminds me of a story. I remember a couple, sort of an old couple who moved into a new house. They moved into a new house. The husband comes home and he sees a cat who is on the lap of his wife. And he goes, what's this cat doing here? She goes, oh, well, the cat just came here. It's like it's his house. He says, no, 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 I'm not having a cat. He grabs the cat, gets in his car, drives a couple lefts, a couple rights, a couple lefts, a couple rights, drops the cat off, heads back, gets back to his house, looks, there's a cat right there on the lap of his wife. He says, oh, no, that's not going to happen. Grabs the cat again, gets back in his car, drives, a couple of lefts, a couple of rights, lefts, rights, drives around his new neighborhood, drops the cat off, comes on back, there's the cat, still, he can't believe it. He says, that's it, I'm getting his cat. He grabs the cat last time, jumps into his car, drives a couple more laps, a couple more rights, a couple more laps, a couple more rights, drops the cat off, realizes he's forgotten his phone, and he's lost. <laughs> <laughs> Gets to a pay phone, there's these looks at grabs a pay phone and calls his wife, says, hey wife, I'm lost, put the cat on. <laughs> I tell that joke just to kind of lighten things up, but there's something important I want to talk about. These events don't happen just magically. They happen because people work hard, like Mimi, thank you so much, but also it takes money. So for those of you who want this to happen, remember you can always donate. You can just go to ca.lp.org. You can put a couple of dollars in to make sure these kinds of things keep happening. Support the state party. I want us to enjoy it, but at the same time, please support your state party. I want to bring someone up right now who works with Chris Rupert. Now, many of you may know Chris Rupert was a big donor for us. He helps out tremendously. So I'm very happy he's going to support us. This woman works with him in her um, foundation for harmony and prosperity. It's a very important foundation which helps move everything forward to include a libertarian idea. Right now she's running for, for state senate in California. I can bring up right now Janine DeRose. <laughs> for the Libertarian Party and the Liberty Movement. Uh, some of you are specifically uh, Liberty Movement, some are Libertarian Party. Either way, the messaging needs to be on point. So we design messaging with our program, and it's long-term. It's, it's thinking about how we can get from where we are to where we want to be. Not an easy job, but it's, I'm grateful that I get to do it. Somehow, um, I got roped into being a candidate, which, uh, how many of you have actually run? Yeah! yeah that's a lot of people. If for a group this size, a significant portion of you have, have been in my shoes. So I'll tell you a little bit about our district. Um, we're in Sacramento, which is where our capital sits. We probably have the highest proportion of uh, state workers anywhere in California. A very union-run city. And so I'm running in a district uh, with half a million voters, and it's 49% Democrat, and the incumbent is uh, well entrenched. So what we did is, um, you guys know Emily, she's fantastic. A lot of you have reached out to her for candidate support. Her and I run the team, and it's uh, day in and day out of reaching out to people on the ground because we can never win in the media. We're not going to get the earned media. We're not going to get the, the paid media. It's just not going to happen. So um, we're reaching people on the ground and we're, we're messaging to them directly. And once they get to know me and they see my character, they're invested, right? So they're not going to bail if there's a mailer sent out bad-mouthing me. So that's our, our, uh, you know, our big technique. 
But as it stands today, we've raised uh, 25500 for the campaign. Wow. Significant amount for the Libertarian campaign. Thank you. Many of you have donated. Uh, we're happy to take donations if you resonate with our message. It's really important to have the funds. But honestly, I really don't do big pushes for uh, donations unless we need it. And so we did a, a $5,000 money bomb in a day and a half, which it blew our minds that it happened that quickly. We were so grateful. And that got us a candidate statement. We're the only candidate with a candidate statement on the ballot. So, yeah. Our amazing Senator Pan, the incumbent, did not feel like four, you know $495,000 was enough for a primary, so he didn't sign the expenditure limits. So he doesn't get a statement, and the other candidates really aren't, uh, they're not a real competition. So this is one of the first times uh, I will have a libertarian candidate to vote for in the general, um, aside from the write-in uh, campaigns that Ted's been so, so well, um, he, he's been masterminding the write-in campaigns and making sure, like, uh, James Just is right next to my district and he's running a write-in campaign. So we do have some write-in candidates on the ballot. Um, otherwise, I haven't seen a competitive candidate get through the primary onto the general. So I'm really excited just from the libertarian perspective. I'm also terrified because it puts like a million dollar bullseye on me from the incumbent, which is going to be interesting. Um, we're getting a lot of flack at this point, but I'll tell you what, the Republican candidate failed to get on the ballot. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It's, it's, we're really well positioned. We're, it's me and three socialists. I'm not even kidding. Yeah. It's amazing. So, I'm really excited. I, I've never been the most conservative person in anything, and this is... <laughs> That's where I'm at. I'm the most conservative candidate in this race. So um, that's about worth a 20% vote right there. So that should get us through the primary. And then the rest of it is just goodwill in the district. So we're really hoping to, to carve a path for other candidates in California. And I know that we have some amazing candidates. Um, gosh, you saw how many hands were raised. How many people are running right now? Yeah, so all of the, yeah, this is like the largest set of candidates I've seen since I've been a libertarian, and I'm really excited about that. A little background on me, I uh, was born and raised in Siskiyou County. I came to Sacramento for opportunity as soon as I could. You know, I graduated high school and I drove straight down here. Um, only place to find jobs, um, at least closest to me. And then I, I actually uh, worked in property management, which is private sector, and then I worked with uh, the state in the public sector, and I became an auditor just through sheer will. Um, I just really just pushed my way through because that's my personality. And so I became credentialed as an auditor, and. I saw firsthand what happens. It's it's more it's more horrible than you could possibly expect. You can't even fathom. I know we talk about it all the time because we're libertarians, um, and we get into the numbers, and we're all like really horrified by the conspiracies and all that stuff. But it really is atrocious when eight cents on the dollar is going to to direct services for children. That's unacceptable. That's why our schools are rated 44th. I mean, it's just easy. It's a numbers game. The numbers aren't the dollars aren't going to the kids. So, <laughs> Larry Sharp just told me to wrap it up. That's kind of a problem. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. Um, I, I'll share what I can, and hopefully it's helpful. So, so I saw it firsthand, and that's what's driving me today. Um, I want to fix what's wrong. I, I want to see more privatized solutions, and the closer we can get to a voluntary society, the better. Yeah. <laughs> We are very lucky to have candidates like that. We were just talking earlier, we were talking about how often, as a third party candidate, or as not one of the old parties, um, very often people underestimate us. And it can be an advantage, right? You go into, I've had it happen myself, I go into a, an interview, and someone steps up, steps up, says a couple of words, I start answering questions, and all of a sudden they're doing this. <laughs> they don't know what to do. But I hope, and it is my hope, and I'm sure all of our hopes, that eventually that advantage of being, eh, who cares, who cares, will go away. Because they'll take us seriously. Because first they laugh at us, and then they'll be afraid of us. And that's our hope. Yeah. And there's a man, 
Yes, thank you so much. We are having some that success now. I'm bring my man right now who can give us some more details on that. Our current chair of the Libertarian Party, Nick Lesola. Hi, California. So, I want to start by saying thank you so much for inviting me out to your convention. Um, I've never been to a California State Convention before, and I'm super impressed. My understanding is this may be a record attendance. That is, I want you guys to feel special, but you're not special. We have been having record attendance in state conventions all around the country. I've been to, I don't remember how many state conventions this year. I didn't get to go to Texas, but what I heard was 390 credential delegates to the point they actually ran out of chairs. All right. These are problems that the Libertarian Party needs to have more of. Janine was talking about how she's raised over $25,000 in a state, uh, state senate race, which is incredible for Libertarian candidates. That's special, but it's not that special. It's happening all over the country. Uh, we've had special elections in Florida raising over $40,000 for a state house race. We've had gubernatorial elections in New York that are pushing on, if not over the $200,000 mark. We have races all around the country that are hitting fundraising numbers that are orders of magnitude higher than any time in my memory. And I could ask Ed or Alicia or Jim to tell me if it was any time in their memory, but I think we're hitting an inflection point as a party where we don't actually know anymore what's possible because it could be that anything is possible. When we get that flack, when you get that target on your back, what you know is that you're over the target. When they're attacking you, that's good because they're saying your name, they're probably spelling it right, they're probably saying libertarian after it. And we have, as a party, an opportunity to make incredible change because we are unconstrained by political reality. Being a libertarian is being unconstrained by political reality. Every one of your opponents has donors and special interests that they owe favors to. They need to win. If they don't win, they don't have jobs. Some of them have never worked. You know, in my mayor's race, two of my opponents have never worked outside the public sector, ever. So they don't know what to do if they don't win the office. I've got a business. If I don't win the office, I go back to work. It's easy. There's a liberation to that. When you can go in as a libertarian candidate and just speak the truth of what the government is doing to the people, how it's infringing on liberties, how it's spending money that they don't have, how it is indebting our children and our grandchildren with no fear of anything, you can make great things happen. So I want all of you to go out there and make great things happen. Those of you who have filed through the normal process, those of you who are going to be working through the write-in process, those of you around the country running for office. I want to talk a little bit about where we are as a national party, um, since that's my job for right now at least. We had the best first quarter for fundraising, and I have to thank a lot of you in this room for doing that. We had the best first quarter for fundraising that we've had since 2004. We are in the best ballot access position we have ever been in as a national party. I know Dr. Lieberman is here somewhere. Raise your hand, Scott. Dr. Lieberman is the one who taught me about the most important ballot access metric in the Libertarian Party. And that's December ballot access. Not how many states were you on when the election came, but how many states were you on after the election was over. And we had 38 states in December of 2016, which is the most we've ever had. All right. We are on track to have at least 48, if not 49 states in the midterm elections. There's a little quirk in one of the state's laws that may make it out of reach. And we will probably have 50 states again in 2020. We are breaking records and breaking barriers all around the country. And what I'm seeing here in California 
is amazing, and I'm so honored to be here, and I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for inviting me. Keep doing what you're doing. YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.